the objective of this study was to characterize uh, PIDA, which is progression dependent of relapse activity, in a population of uh, people who had presented with a first attack of MS. Okay, so this was the main the main thing to understand that in this. But also we wanted to assess different types or subtypes of PIDA. So for that, we analyzed uh, PIRA with, uh, so PIRA occurring very early in the disease course and PIRA occurring late in the disease course. This was the first specification. And we all also wanted to assess whether PIRA can occur in the absence of any, um, any uh, imaging activity, any inflammatory activity in the MRI. So th these were the, the main aims of the, of the study. First, to understand what happens in very early disease. Second, what happens when PIDA occurs very early in the disease, very, very early. And third, what happens when PIDA occurs in patients with no prior inflammatory activity. To carry out um, the, the study, we, we analyzed a cohort of uh, 754 patients with a first attack of MS, and we followed them up um, during uh, many, many, for many, many years. And then we analyzed the periods free of relapses. And these periods were um, starting um, three months after each one of the, of the relapses except for the first attack, which was the CIS, for which we allowed six months. So those periods where we did not see any relapse were the periods where we analyzed the increased um, disability. So to assess, to say that the patient had had a PIDA event, we, um, we computed or we analyzed whether the person had uh, shown a uh, an increase in the EDSS, which was confirmed six months later. Okay, when this happened, we said that the person had a PID event, and of course, uh, patients could have more than one PID event. But for this analysis, for this study, we focused on the first PID event. So the main the main results of this uh, study um, were that um, in our cohort of patients with the CIS, we found that a third had at least one PIDA event, which is a lot of people. And when we analyzed a PIDA that was very, uh, occurring very early in the disease, within the first five years, we could see that of all PIDA, all, that all, of all patients with PIDA, a third of those will have a PIDA within the five years of the disease. Okay, and when we analyzed the PIDA that was in the absence of recent MRI activity, we also found that of all PIDA patients or all patients with PIDA, a third would have a PIDA in the absence of MRI activity. And then when we analyzed the characteristics of patients with PIDA early or late, we, we found that those patients with an early PIDA uh, were older with more spinal cord lesions, and in general had um, fewer relapses. And all this suggested that patients with early PIDA had um, features that were more similar to progressive MS. So this is why we said that um, presenting very early PIDA indicates or suggests, better suggests that um, this early PIDA has occurred as a um, consequence of, um, of a neurodegenerative process. Whereas those patients with late PIDA had a, a much more inflammatory disease with more relapses, more, spinal, more brain lesions. And these people probably had their PIDA in the context of an inflammation-driven process. This is... Um, what we, we concluded. And then for those patients who presented PIDA in the absence of recent MRI activity, again, these people were older and they were more likely to have a normal brain MRI. So again, presenting PIDA in the absence of MRI suggested that this PIDA was mainly in the context of a neurodegenerative process.
these were the main conclusions of the study. The importance of this study or, you know, in the broader context of the disease are, is that um, this study and other studies also um, tackling PIRA because PIRA has been uh, assessed by different uh, people in, in the ECDIM uh, Congress. This, this study suggests that PIRA uh, shows that, um, so these PIRA studies show that uh, progression probably starts from very early in the disease course, at least in some people, maybe not in everybody, but in, in, in a subset of patients, this neurodegenerative process probably is, is present from, from the very, very beginning. So what's the, what's the next step? So knowing that, what can we, what can we do? So um, the next step would be to try and identify those patients who are more likely to present this uh, early uh, predominant neurodegenerative process. Okay, because it is likely, it is possible that these people need a uh, different um, treatment um, approaches and more linked to the, to the mechanism that is uh, mainly driving disability in those people. So um, identifying uh, people with an early PIRA or PIRA in the absence of MRI activity is very important. And another aspect that can be highlighted uh, from these studies is that may, maybe the clinical phenotypes in MS need to take into account these um, differences in when and in what context neurodegeneration or clinical progression appears in the absence of relapses.